So today I'm out in the Biological Reserve at Earth Connection Center and we're creating a bunch of different wildlife ponds and wildlife ponds are really important in the Yucatan especially because we have a six months dry season where there's very little rain and the soil becomes very very dry and the other consideration is that we don't have lakes and we don't have rivers in the Yucatan uh, so what we have is these sinkholes called cenotes and the water is about seven meters below the ground and so the wildlife most of them they have to go down into that cenote to get the water because that's the only place to get it and so to make it easier for the wildlife and to attract more wildlife onto the property we're making a whole bunch of these different wildlife ponds I think this is an excellent tool and we'll, we'll go through some of the different processes of making it and, and, uh, and we hope that you'll add some water features to your property. So naturally we have a, a limestone bedrock and you can see we've used some of the local rocks and just built up the edge and cemented it together and then so then we're just filling with this with water and to prevent mosquitoes we'll be putting some fish in there and we'll put a little bit of uh, aquatic vegetation so that the the frogs and different things have a place to hide so there's not just uh, an easy place for the, the predators to get them. Uh, one of the other considerations the the edges on this are fairly steep but so we created a little pathway here out of rock so it's a nice slope and then a slope into the pond so that the little creatures like armadillo and things like that have a hard time getting over this lip. So we could either fill the edge back in with just soil and bring it up to that level or just adding this little pathway here so that they have a place to come in and out. So initially we just put out this little bowl of water and you'd be surprised at how many birds came to this and even now, we find that they, they have, the smaller birds have a preference for this, this small bowl. And they come up and we put a rock inside here so that they can stand. And they sit on the side of the bowl and they take a drink. And then they, they actually jump right in and they, they'll flutter around and they'll take a bath. So we're in the tropics and it's, it gets up to about 40 degrees here. And one of the considerations is not using plastic because the the plastic will release chemicals into the water that are toxic and we're just using a clay bowl an untreated clay bowl so that the the water will actually wick, wick out to the edge and because of evapotranspiration it'll actually keep the water cool so it's really important that uh, you keep the water cool and then it doesn't evaporate fast and the birds have a, a nice place to drink I'm also just one of the management practices is also just putting a little bit of diatomaceous earth in here because the birds sometimes have parasites, mites and ticks and fleas, different things like that. And the diatomaceous earth actually, it scratches the cuticle of the insect. Uh, it's non-toxic, it's just a, an earth and it's made of diatoms basically and they're a silica shell as a uh, very sharp edges and it scratches the cuticle of the insect and so we just put a little bit into the water it doesn't take very much and then every time the birds go for a drink of water they'll get a little bit of that and, it, and it's just earth so it won't hurt them and when they take a bath they'll fluff up the water and uh, stir it up a little bit and the diatomaceous earth will mix in with the, the water that they're taking a bath with and that'll help to, to kill the insects that are parasites on them. So here we have another spot where we could create a wildlife pond. We've got our irrigation line, a new irrigation line that we're laying here to put another area for a botanical garden. And so you've got this rock face and it's very impermeable. So basically you're just taking a bit of concrete and, and then 
you just start laying out your wall around it and stacking it up. So eventually you'll just create a little bit of an edge around there and that'll hold enough water. And you want to make sure you have enough of a deep spot in there so if the water goes down at all or if there's a, some animal that drinks a lot of water, then uh, the fish still have a little bit of a refuge in it. So this is an example of a sartaneja. And so this is a, a naturally occurring pool in the limestone. So the limestone's eaten out by the rain over time. And during the rainy season, this will fill up with water. And so we have a number of these around the property. And uh, they're like little pools. And so we don't need to enhance these. These are, are naturally occurring. So this is another wildlife pond that we've created. It's at the end of one of our irrigation lines. And so it's a perfect place to put another pool. And so we've added some aquatic vegetation in here and we'll be adding some fish to control the mosquitoes. And you see it's got a nice lip around the edge, but then we've left this section open so that the wildlife can come in and out without any problem. Uh, and it's got a nice slope on there so they shouldn't have any problem getting in and out. And, but it's also got a deeper section in the middle so that the the, the fish can still survive for a long period of time, even if the water drops down. So, and then we've got the vegetation here that allows the, the tadpoles and the fish some place to hide. So, because if you get raccoons or different things in there, they'll go in, they'll, they'll try to eat your fish. But just giving them a bit of habitat heterogeneity, it allows them to, to survive and reproduce. So we've noticed a significant increase in the in the amount of wildlife that's coming to our property. And so we're getting deer that come here, we're getting kwati, we're getting armadillo, we're getting anteaters, all sorts of different uh, wild animals are coming here and, and getting a drink of water because there is no other water source in the area and this is a very easy water source for them to get to. So they come for long distances and and come here and we're also getting a huge diversity of different bird species coming here and the other advantage of having a, a, a pond like this is because these birds are coming from all over they're actually bringing seeds with them so things like the the, the uh, papaya the wild papaya and the wild chili they're spreading those seeds all over for us and they're doing that naturally and they're also bringing in things. We found uh, waya seeds, we found pistachio, wild pistachio seeds, and they're just kind of dropping them all over the place and they're helping spread naturally the different seeds. And so it's, it's helping to speed up the natural process of rest restoration for its property.